Good evening, teacher. guys um we are just five today but i don't know if the other ones are going to connect or if they still think that we're still on vacations but um well we are about to finish this model guys and uh, i would like to know if you already complete the the platform you guys that are here, do you already finish the platform? Yes, teacher. Yes. Okay, cool. Very good. What okay. What about you, Kelia and Rosa? Did you complete it already? No, yes, teacher. All right, very good. So, um, because remember that it, it is a requirement for you to go to the next level. So if you complete the process or if you complete the, the platform, you won't have any problems going to the next level, okay? So, um, well, still six, well, five people. So I don't know if the other ones are going to connect or not. Well, I hope you have enjoyed your day yesterday because most of us, we had our day off, right? Because of the Independence Day. So I hope you have enjoyed with your family or resting at home because I know that some of you are working and well, that's kind of tight and right, but thanks God we had a day off yesterday. So we are going to start, guys, because I don't know if the other ones are going to connect today. And if they connect, so uh, they will join us through the, through the beta conference. Because we just have one hour and we already spent like two minutes. So time is gold. Today, guys, we are going to see a topic that... I will say that it's easy, but I don't know the way that you're going to understand it. But we are going to start. And today we are going to see something that we call model verbs. And specifically today, we are going to see the model verbs can and could. Those are the, the ones that we are going to focus on today. Uh, but there's, there are more model verbs, but today we're going to only focus on these two. So probably you already know how to use them, but today I'm just going to give you a brief explanation about some rules that you need to follow in order to create some sentences or some grammatical structures that you need to remember so you don't make mistakes when it comes to grammar. And, um, well, that's gonna be pretty much it, but I'm pretty sure that most of you already know like a general usage of this, but we're going to start with that. So the name or the official name of the topic that we used to call this both 
it is model verbs. That's how we call them in grammar, right? And well, we're going to start. First of all, we are going to try to know what, what is or what are model verbs? Because as I mentioned to you at the beginning, we have more than these two. There are more. We have more model verbs, but today we're just going to focus on these two. So we have a brief explanation or a brief meeting, uh, meaning about it. And it says the model verbs express modality, ability, possibility, necessity, probability, obligation, or other conditions. We call them model verbs, guys, because each one of them, um, it's used for a different, uh, a different situation, situation such as possibilities. The ones that we are going to, to see today can and could, those are focused on the possibility or probability. And uh, we have some examples right here, like I can cook Italian recipes, or you could use my pen. We also have an example that we are not going to see today that is wood, but wood, it, it is part of the model verbs, but this is just a general example. I would like a cup of coffee, please. And uh, we're going to start. So something very important, guys, that you need to remember about model verbs is that they are complementary verbs. So um, it's very important that you know that model verbs are never going to work. They never work without another verbs. Why? Because they are part of a complement of another verb. And let's, uh, let's try to understand that they are not verbs. They are just complementary verbs, which are going to help us to obviously complement the main verb that we are going to be using in the, in the sentence. Something also very important that you need to understand or that you need to remember is that model verbs are not conjugated and they have no tenses. What does that mean? That we are going to never modify them even though, uh, or even if we use the third person, we will never modify them because they cannot be conjugated. So those are things that you need to remember. And well, that is going to help you to, to, to the grammar part so you don't make mistakes when it comes to that. Another thing, how do we create positive sentences? We have a structure that you need to follow. The first part, it is a subject. We have here, right? I do with they, he, she, it. That is the subject. After that, we go with the model verb that in this case is gonna be could. Listen to the pronunciation, could and can. Be very careful, guys. Be very careful with the pronunciation because in American English, we have uh, something that is a lata. And it is raining the same way. Se escribe de la misma manera. So how, or how are we going to make the difference between these two words? Very simple. The model verb, we are going to pronounce it as can. And this noun, la lata, la vamos a pronunciar como can. Can, can. So um, in British English, in English Britannico or in British accent, they pronounce the words exactly the same way. So si alguna vez escuchas que ellos dicen can, no necesariamente se van a estar refiriendo a la lata. Ellos pronuncian de igual manera el model verb que el noun lata. So they say can and can. They don't make difference. What is the difference for them? The context. The context is going to give you the difference that they are doing. 
but in American English, guys, we do make a difference. What's the difference? Model bear, we say it can, and the noun, lata, we say it can. So pay attention to that pronunciation so you don't make mistakes when it comes to pronunciation, okay? So um, as I was saying, we have to follow this structure, subject, I do with the he, she, it, model verb, in this case, could and can, that are going to be the ones that, that we are going to be focused on today. And then we have the main verb, for example, we have a go and it. And after that, we have a complement. So as examples, we, be, we will have some sentences like this. You could go to the museum. You could go to the museum. She can eat pizza. She can eat pizza. So this is the structure or the formula that you need to follow when you want to create positive sentences. So what about the negative ones? Or something very important that I was like almost forgetting about this is that we do not modify the verb on the third person. Por favor, no cambiamos o no modificamos el verbo en tercera persona, aunque ya sabemos que en tercera persona deberíamos de cambiarlo. ¿Sí? Pero cuando tenemos un model verb adelante del verbo, we will never, ever modify the verb on the third person. So the verb will still stay in the same base form. So keep that in mind, guys. Please, so you don't make mistakes. So let's see what happens with the negative sentences. So, hello? I can hear kind of an interference, but I don't know if someone of you is trying to say something. No, I. Okay, so I don't know what just happened. All right, so um, when it comes to negative sentences, guys, um, we also have to follow a formula or an structure that we need to follow. It's very, very simple. We just add the, the word not. So we have the subjects. Once again, I do with they, he, she, it, model verb, could or couldn't, we can make the, the abbreviation of these two words. We can say could or couldn't, can or can't. We're going to see that later on. So after that, we have the main verb and the last part, the complement. So we have right here. So we have two ways to pronunciate or to say these things when it comes to negative sentences. We can say, you could not go to the museum or you can make the, um, the abbreviation of that and you can say, you couldn't, you couldn't go to the museum. We can say, she can't eat pizza or she cannot eat pizza. Something very important, guys. Once again, we do not modify the verb on the third person. Another rule that you need to remember. When we use could in negative, the meaning of that changes. ¿Por qué? Could significa podría. That's the, that's the meaning or the translation of that word. Pero cuando lo usamos en pasado, su significado cambia totalmente. ¿Cómo? Si yo lo uso en pasado, ya no significa podría, sino que significa no pude. Automáticamente se cambia a pasado. So, entonces hay que ser very careful with that, ¿ok? 
So you don't make mistakes. Why? Because you probably could think, ustedes podrían pensar como, ok, si significa podría in affirmative or in positive, si yo digo, si yo quiero decir no podría, podría decir couldn't, but no. In English, it's not like that. So in English, when you use the negative, automatically that will mean no pude. So it changes, the meaning changes. So keep that in mind, guys. So um, that's one of the, um, of the things that you need to remember because the meaning podría, it stays only for the positive sentences. Once again, but if, when it comes to the negative sentences, if you use could not or couldn't, the meaning will change automatically. So keep that in mind. Any questions so far, guys, or any question that you might have regarding to this? Y si fuera en pasado, ¿cómo, cómo lo diríamos? ¿Cómo se escucha en pasado? La, like what? I, 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 I don't really understand your question. Por, por ejemplo, en presente, could es podría. podría. Mm -hmm. Y si es pasado, ¿cómo se pronuncia? It doesn't really exist. No existe podría. Eh, como decir... Eh, Sería como I can't. I, no, ese es como I can't es no puedo. No puedo. Uh -huh. No puedo. So, uh, what you need to remember is the following thing. Cuando quiere decir podría, y utilizamos could in affirmative or positives, significa que estamos dando una posibilidad a algo. Pero cuando decimos uh -huh. eh, no pude hacer tal cosa, automáticamente ya no vamos a decir, um, o cuando nosotros quisiéramos decir, eh, tú no podrías hacer esto. Ya no podemos utilizar could not porque uh -huh. su significado cambia. Ya sería no pude. I couldn't. No pude. Se, se volvería al pasado, aunque para nosotros estaría en presente. I don't know if you understand my idea. Entonces decir I couldn't automáticamente es no pude. Exactly. Uh -huh. Ok. Gracias. All right. Teacher, pero el verbo, el verbo normal, mm -hmm. ese no cambiaría. No, it doesn't, it doesn't change. No, el verbo no cambia. Ya sea tercera persona o ya sea que digamos no pude, el verbo siempre va a estar en su forma base. Estas son cosas un poco, un, un poco difíciles de asimilar cuando, vi, cuando hablamos de gramática. Por eso es necesario, that's completely necessary that you pay attention to the rules because if you don't pay attention to the rules you might get lost okay, so, teacher. okay. teacher mm -hmm. um, can solo se usaría para they he y she o se puede usar en i we y you no all of them so i mean you can use could con todos I could, we could, you could, they could, he could, she could, it could. También con can. I can, we can, you can, they can, she can, everything. So both of them, you can use it with any personal pronoun. All of them. Y it no se usa. Yes. Yeah, but yeah. Appar apparently I didn't, no lo incluí in the, in the object and the subjects. It was fingers mistake, but I mean, you already know that I do with the he shit. All of them are there. Okay. So, okay. Like, I don't understand your question. Can you please try to try to say it in other words? So I can. Oh, very simple. If you want to say, uh, for example, si tú quieres decir podría, estás, estás dando automáticamente una posibilidad que si podés o no podés. No le estás diciendo directamente puedo. 
Si tú dices directamente puedes porque lo vas a hacer, right? So you will do it. So if you say, I can, I can, like what? I can prepare cake. Yo puedo preparar pastel because you can. But if you say, I, I could prepare some cake. Podrías, porque bien sea que lo sabes o bien sea que no lo sabes. So la diferencia entre los dos es esa. Si tú utilizas could, es porque tú estando, estás dando la posibilidad de sí o no. But if you use can, es porque tú en realidad puedes hacer las cosas. Entonces, can significa puedo y cool sería podría. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. So. Let's move on. We are going to see how we can create questions because we can also create questions with the model verbs. We also have an structure that we need to follow. We have, we can use a WH question, the model verb, the subject, the main verb, and at the end, we have uh, the question mark, or we can just add another complement, but we will see that in the next slide. So here we have the structure. If you want to use a WH question, you can use it. But if you only want to use a model verb, you can also only use a model verb, but we will see that later on. So example. We have, uh, let me see, let me show you the examples. We can say, where could we go? Where could we go? Donde podríamos ir? What can you eat? Que puedes comer? So, if you want to use a WH question at the beginning, you can use it, but you have to be pretty sure about what are you asking or how to use the WH question. And because we already saw the use of WH questions, I'm pretty sure that you already know how to use them. So we have another form or another way to make questions. And we have the following pattern or the following structure. We can only use a model verb, a subject, a verb, and a complement and obviously the question mark. So what is the difference between this one and this one? Very simple. If you notice in this one, we are using a, w, a WH question and that's the only difference. Esta es la única diferencia acá, que al inicio se usa una WH. But what is the difference with this one? Very simple, in this one, we do not use the WH question. We only use the model bar. So we have two ways of creating question with the model verbs, can and could. Let's see some examples. Could we go to the museum? Can you eat pizza? So if you notice, we have two ways. The first one, a WH question at the beginning, then the model verb, and you know already the structure, right? Or we can only use a model verb at the beginning, then the subject, then the verb, and then the complement. We can use both structures. So it's very important that you know them or that you know both of them, okay? So, um, any question regarding to the questions? With the model De las dos formas se pueden hacer las preguntas. Yes, both. Yes, están correctas. Correct, yes. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's, there's no uh, grammatical mistakes. You can use both of them with the WH question or just the model bar. Here we have a list. These are the 10 model verbs that 
it exists in the English language. As I told you at the beginning, today we are going to only focus on these two, but I just wanted to show you this part so you can have an idea or which are the other ones. The other ones that we have are may, might, will, would, shall, should, must, and ought to. But these ones, you will see it later on, not in this module, it will be in another phase. So probably in the next module, you will see the full model bars. But today we're going to only focus on these two. But I consider that it's very important that you know just an, a little introduction of the other ones before getting to know them well. So this is the list. Remember in English language, we just have 10 model verbs that these are the ones that we have in the English language. So. Coach, y podría decirnos el significado de ellos, aunque no lo veamos así cada uno. Um, it's kind of complicated, but I will try to, to, to give it to you because for example, there's a lot of similar meanings and that's why it's very important first of all give you an explanation but i will try to do it like in a very simple way so if i said may okay if i say may that will be poder as well uh no es el mes vea se escribe igual que el mes may but it's not mayo it's poder might is como a synonym of podría también Synonym of could, will, obviously, is the future. El futuro, ¿verdad? I will go. This. Eso solo se, will solo se usa para el futuro, ¿verdad? Do you mean will? Para oraciones en futuro. Do you mean will? Will. Yeah, will, uh -huh. it is just used for the future. Just for the future. Y will es, sería como para solo pasado. No. O no. No. Would it will be for the present form as well, or you can use it in the present, present perfect tense as well. But they, cuando ponemos este would adelante de un verbo, le va a dar al verbo la terminación de ría. Por ejemplo, si yo pongo el verbo go y yo digo would go, sería iría. Si yo le pongo el verbo comer aquí, eat, y yo pongo would eat, Comería, no sé si. Como en infinitivo, algo así. No, not exactly. No. no, solo tienen que saber que cuando yo pongo el would antes del verbo, la terminación que le va a dar al verbo sería como ría, correría, okay. eh, comería, saltaría, gustaría, all that. That will be the, el uso que le vamos a dar. Shall es. Es como decir, es un sinónimo de would as well. So, estos dos son utilizados para el, casi que para la misma situación y le da el, al verbo el mismo, la misma terminación, solo que este se utiliza en situaciones de un lenguaje bien coloquial. Eh, ya no es muy utilizado en in, in the English, uh, the currently one, En el, en el que hablamos por el momento, este shall era utilizado en el lenguaje antiguo, cuando el inglés inició, right? So we have been changing some rules when it comes to grammar. Some people still use shall, y ustedes lo pueden ver tal vez en algún libro, or some what, some grammar things, but this is a very old, a very old use, pero son sinónimos con would. Okay, so should significa como debería. Debería, you, por ejemplo, si yo te digo, you should do, deberías hacer, you should do your homework. Deberías hacer tu tarea, you should do your homework. Must, cuando utiliza must, es que yo te estoy diciendo algo obligatorio. Tú tienes que, esto significa tener que, si yo digo, Si yo te digo, you must do your homework. Tienes que hacer tu tarea. Es mandatorio. Mandatory, ok. And ought to es un sinónimo de should. 
So those are the um, like the very simple explanation about that. Hasta el momento puede ser un poco confuso porque el hecho de que varios son sinónimos de otros, but you will see that in the next module, so you will understand or you will um, clarify all of the doubts that you have at the moment. Okay. Yes. Teacher. Thank you so much. All right. Aparte de will que se usa en futuro, mm -hmm. todos los demás se usan en presente. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, we're going to go like a little bit deep with uh, the two ones that we're going to see today. We're going to start with the model verb can. And the meaning of this one is to be able to indicates also ability or some possibility. We have some examples right there, like I can swim uh, or can you drive? I can speak English. Can you help me? So if you can see here, all of them are that you are able to or that you are not able to, they are indicating ability or if you are not able to or if you have or or if there's a possibility as well. As I told you at the beginning, can and could are kind of similar because both of them are part of the possibility path. So they both give you a possibility, but the one or the main one used for possibility is could. Um, can will be just for more be able to or indicates ability. And this is what I was telling you. Uh, with could, it says that the meaning past, the, past tense of can Se conoce como el pasado de can, could. And it also indicates ability or possibility, but in the past. It says Joe could speak uh, when he was young. Aquí es un, poco, es un poco complicado y quizás lo va a confundir a lo que ya vimos al inicio. So pay attention to this, guys. Could. Puede significar en el presente, podría. Y les dije que en pasado, cuando lo utilizábamos como could not, es como no pude. Pero, esto es un poco tricky. Why? Because it can also mean a possibility in the past. Puede significar también una posibilidad en el pasado, aunque la estemos utilizando en presente. So, if you notice in the first sentence, si se fijan en la primera oración, dice, Joe could speak when he was young. So, if we use it, si la utilizamos eh, como podría, it doesn't make sense. So, la, para cuando signifique una posibilidad en el pasado, la vamos a traducir como Podía, instead of podría. So if I say it in the first one, Joe could speak when he was young. Es como decir, Joe podía hablar cuando era joven o cuando estaba más pequeño. So uh, do you understand the idea or just your mind is blowing right now, like exploding with a lot of information? Yo había entendido hasta aquí. <laughs> and now you're getting lost one more time. <laughs> All right. So, algo muy importante. Again, I will repeat it one more time. So, sabemos que significa podrías. Podrías, pero cuando lo utilizamos con un sentido de posibilidad en el pasado, Podríamos utilizarlo de la forma podía para dar una posibilidad del pasado. Even though we are still using in the present tense. So we have the example one more time. If I have uh, the sentence or if, if we check the sentence number three, it says, could you play an instrument when you were a child? Si lo, 
aquí desde el momento que estamos o qué es lo que nos va a dar la pauta para que sepamos que estamos hablando de una posibilidad del pasado. Bien fácil, porque acá va a haber algo que nos va a denotar o una forma o un verbo que nos va a denotar que estamos hablando del pasado. Si se fijan, if you notice on the first one, it says Joe could speak. Pero en la próxima, um, en esta parte, en la partícula, en esta parte de acá tenemos was. ¿Y was es qué? ¿Presente o pasado? Pasado. Entonces, como es pasado, automáticamente nosotros vamos a saber que este could ya no está significando podría, sino que está significando podía con una possibility in the past. Why? This o la cláusula que sigue después nos va a dar la pauta para saber cuándo va a ser podría y cuándo va a ser podía. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Depende del contexto y del verbo que se use, vamos a saber si es podría o podía. Exactly. So if you see the verb o la cláusula que va después, el verbo, está en pasado, automatically you will know that if you have a verb in past, that will be a possibility for the past. So the, the meaning, it will change automatically because you're going to be talking about a possibility in the past. So, but if you do not have uh, nothing or the context, it doesn't give you a verb in a past form and you only have a verb in the present tense, that means that the possibility it will be in the present. I don't know if you get me the idea right now. Is it more clear? Yes. Yes, more clear. Okay, perfect. Teacher. Mm -hmm. Y aparte de was, hay otro. Mm -hmm. O cualquier otro verbo sería que estuviera en pasado así después. Yeah, la, no. eh, por ejemplo, let me see, let me, let me try to think an example so you can understand. Hmm. Hmm. Teacher I, was, where, los dos son el pasado, ¿verdad? Del verb be. Del yeah. verbo to be, ajá. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. So, if I said something like, could you eat frits while while you Oh no, in this case, it will be why you bake the cake. So, and in this case, am I using um, a possibility for the past or am I using a possibility in the present? Past. In the past. Right. Why? Because in the next clause, in la cláusula que está a la par, tenemos un verbo en el en pasado. So automatically we know that in that case, could is going to be a possibility in the past, not in the present. So is it clear now? Like more clear? Yes. More clear. All right. Perfect. So here we finish with the grammar part, guys. Now we are going to the practice. So is there any question before we go? Oh, I was forgetting this part. Um, but let me see, kill it also mills possibility for the future. No, we already know that. So for never mind. All right, so is there any question so far? So far, so good. Something that you would like me to tell you to reinforce 
to repeat one more time so it, it will be more clear. So tell me now, now that we have the time. If not, we are going to go to the practice. Lisa, the All right. So there's no questions? Well, if no. there, all right, perfect. <laughs> so, so number one is already done. So this is number two. Is it done? Yes, teacher. So this is number three. Listo. And this is the last one. What? Very simple. And these parts of which you have, uh, you are going to only put could or can. That's very simple. Teacher, y en la, en la segunda? And the number two in this one, I, I, th I think that this one is going to be a little more tricky. Why? because you will need to create a sentence according to the question you have. So I give you the question and you will have to give me the answer to that question, obviously using can or, yeah, in this case, just can because we just have questions with can. Thank you. All right. So let me see. So I don't know what just happened. I saw that we were 14 or something and I can see only right now 12. And now 11. So people is disconnecting. I don't know why. All right, let me see, perfect. So go ahead guys, please try to join your groups. It will be in room number two, but. Oh my God, let me try to. Let me see, because. Just give me a moment. I'm trying to add it to this. Can you can you try to do something? Can you please um, disconnect from the call and then connect one more time so I can add you to the group? Because right now it doesn't give me an option to add you or to move you to another group. So disconnect the call and then try to connect the call one more time. So con desconecta la llamada por el momento, luego vuelve a conectarte para yo poderte agregar a otro grupo. Because it, it doesn't give me an option right now. Please. Mm -hmm.
Teacher, en la 2 lo vamos a formular de la, de la siguiente forma, donde comenzamos con el modal verb. Mm. O, ¿Cuál like, es la indicación? Like, for example, if, I, if you have the question, what songs can you sing? You're going mm -hmm. to say, you can sing in a compliment. Ah, ok. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. You just have to remember the formula that you need to follow for positive uh -huh. sentences. That's it. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, teacher. Okay. Lo siento, se me fue la luz y me quedé sin internet. No le escucho. Okay. We see. You were working with Alfred and Monica? Yes. All right. Just let me try to add you to the group and Rosa as well. Okay. Thank you. Did you receive now the notification? Oh, yes, she did. ¿verdad? Thailand, ajá. Thailand. 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 Or Japanese Thailand food. food. <laughs> Todo asiático, nosotros. <laughs> o, o, o italiano, italiano. I can cook Chinese and Italian food. <laughs> Italian. Okay. okay. Sí, mejor Italian. Italian food. Okay. Los espagueti. <laughs> la, la pizza, la pizza. ¿Qué haces? hacer? Eh, ¿Qué significa feel? Sentir. Sentir. Ah. ¿Qué es lo que te hace sentir feliz? Ah. Comer. <risa> Creo que lo, dormir y comer. Dormir y comer. <risa> <Yes>. <risa> Sí, sí, tal vez. Exercise. Sí, comer, hacer ejercicio. Exercise. Ver televisión. Hacer ejercicio. Hay que eh, play basketball. <laughs> Pero no sé si, si, si contestarían a la pregunta. Ah, mmm, como es bien generalizada. 
Podría ser que sí. What can you make? Okay, have you. Es que si contesto, yo puedo jugar básquetbol. No. Yo siento que no. O tener buena salud también. ¿Eh? Tener buena salud me hace sentir feliz. Casi no la escuché. Tener buena salud. No enfermarme. Hoy sí. So I will give you a clue on this one. So to, me, to have more sense, para que tenga más sentido, tienen que empezar. To make myself feel happy, I can, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Entonces ahí sí entraría o hacer ejercicio. Exacto. Number two, cold. Cold. Chicor. Mm. Yeah, number three, Bihan say he cold. Eh, en, el, en el number two, me dijo cold. Cold. Uh -huh, cold. Uh -huh. en, en esa misma de la number bueno está la tri y Ay, four. cuatro uh -huh. sería una number three call number four call not call call not uh -huh. ahí se va a ir completo el not no va a ir este no contratado, hay ¿eh? sí, contratados son col col entonces col uh -huh. uh, Adam and her mother col pudieron abrir la puerta porque estaba cerrada 
-huh. estaba como con llave, quiere decir. Cool. Entonces sería uh -huh. cool, not. Ajá, cool. Ajá, ajá. Cool. Sería cool, con uh -huh. negativa. Negativa, ajá, porque dice que no la podrían abrir porque no la podían abrir porque estaba cerrada. ¿Cómo es? Con llave. Estaba con llave. Sería, I can, en las six, I can finally talk. I can't. Uh -huh. I can't. Legalmente. Podría ser. <ríe> legalmente, legalmente. Legalmente. Pero Podría ser ellos. Mm, no, verdad, o oh, sí. Bueno, they can, they can drive. They can drive at 18 years old. Okay. Uh -huh. Sí, verdad. Sí. Yes. No. Well, so guys, did you complete them all? No. No oh. finish. Which no exercises finish. did you? So I, I'm guessing you, you just did number one, number two, and probably number three. But the last one, I think that. Mm, no, <laughs> All right. Okay, so um, because tomorrow we don't have class and uh, on Monday it will be our last class, these exercises will be just for you to practice. So that means that today we're going to resolve just number one and number two. And the other ones, they will be for you just to practice because, well, on Monday is going to be our last class, okay? So, um, let me see. Um, Mario, can you please help me with, uh, with the number one? Just let me screw in. Number one, what is the option that you choose? That model is... Uh... ¿Cómo se dice 100? Se me olvidó. 100 o 100. 100. 100 dólares. Ok. Very good. Tatiana, number two. Of course, the old and night to get an outside line. Of course, dial a nine to get outside line. Very good. Beatriz, number three. 
Beatriz Inocente. I think she's not there. Okay. Uh, Catherine, number three. Letter B. Letter B. Sí, sí, sí. Excuse me. Call have some information. Yes. How can we help you? All right, so yes, it is letter C or number three because it is asking you, excuse me, could I have some information? And that person tells you, yes, how can I help you? What do you want to know? Because you're asking for information. So Rosa Maya, number four. you send me confirmation um i'm sorry i try not to speak too fast mm. of course. exactly so because the question is puedes darme o enviarme la confirmación y si tú dices i'm sorry lo siento trataré de no hablar tan rápido so that, it doesn't make sense, right? So uh, the answer will be, of course, I'll do it now. You'll get it in the post tomorrow, okay? So let's see, Angelica, number one. I, what songs can you sing? Mm -hmm. I can sing romantic songs. Very good. Alfred, number two. Can you I'm sorry, I, I didn't get what you said. Not at all. Hello? Can you repeat it again? I couldn't hear what you said. Yes, yes. What kind of food can you cook? Mm -hmm. I can cook Chinese food. Chinese food, okay, very good. Uh, Tatiana. Number three. I can make myself happy to sleep and head. Mm, kind of. Some grammar mistakes over there, but kind of. Okay. So someone has something different, Mario. I just, or Alfred, I gave you some help with this. So can you help me with this one? Oh, is Mario here? I, yes, uh, I can practice the class in number four. Okay, I can practice the class, very good. And Angelica, one more time, I will ask you for the last one. At what age can people drive in your country? Mm -hmm. They can drive at 18 years old. Very good. Okay, guys. Um, well, this is pretty much it. As I told you, uh, well, as I told you so minutes ago on Monday, it will be our last class. So the other exercises that you have, that is just for you to practice, okay? Just to put some practice on you, on the classes and so on. So I will see you till Monday and that will be our last class okay so that's all for today and have a good night good night good night teacher bye bye, -bye.